everybody wants a herb garden. I know, nothing beats fresh herbs and rather than opening up your drawer and getting those dried things. Yeah, you've got to have the fresh things and everybody wants them, but we kind of don't know how do we start, how should we get going, and what is the right way to plant them? Well, they're all pretty simple and pretty forgiving. We've got a beautiful fragrance, even Holly thinks so. And how do we get it right? So, the, the standard rules about herbs is they need full sun. Lots and lots of sun, five hours minimum. Um, Holly's now going for the superphosphate and the bone meal, so we say goodbye. There. So, how do we get it right? Well, there are loads of ways we can grow herbs. In window boxes, we can grow them in pots, we can grow them in the garden, in amongst our flowers. Or we could try something completely different, a bit wild and wacky. So, I introduce Exhibit A, the birdcage. You know, I've had this lying around my garden for I don't know how long. I once planted some succulents and it had a bit of fun with it. But like everything in life, something comes, has its time, has its place, and then we're over it. Well, I was over it. So what I'm going to do today is show you if you don't have space, if you can only hang something up, if you've got a little courtyard or a tiny weeny little balcony that you can still grow some herbs. So this is how we do it. What I've done is in most bird cages, they can, the top can lift off. So let's do that. Aha, let's put this baby over here. All right, so we have the base. It's pretty old. I mean, it's really got some drilled holes in it and it's important that you would need to do some drainage holes in it, folks, please. All right, I've had to put a piece of plank here because it's got a little hole over here where the tray used to be, but you know, boer maka plan, ne? So this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be putting my herbs in here. To start off with, I need some of this. This is weed guard. You don't need to make any holes in it or anything because water drains freely through it. However, it stops the soil from going through the drainage holes and blocking them up. So I just put that down. Lay that down nice and simply. There we go, at the base. And then let's go a bit this way and let's start getting our potting soil ready. So in my trug, I've got some plain potting soil and what I'm going to add into it, just a few bits and pieces. Some fairy dust, it's like I'm making muffins. <laughs> Bone meal, small handfuls of organic pellets and mix away. Get this nice and mixed in, there we go. And uh, this is going to be the base for my awesome herb container. Now, when you are looking around and about for a bird cage or anything that might be suitable to grow herbs in, the only thing you've got to worry about is the depth of your, your outside. Just that little lip should be nothing less than 15 centimeters. Really important because obviously these little herbs have got roots and they need to find their way into some good organic medium. Right, now that it's mixed in, happy with that, let's take our trug along and let's throw in some soil. Right, that should do it for starters. What we're going to do now is just feed the soil into the corners, making sure that my little piece of wood is there. And it's amazing the volume that you can actually fit into something that's so lovely and wide. So not too much soil, and you can see I filled it up literally just halfway, okay? Not too much, because this is going to be almost like creating a little miniature herb garden, um, and we're going to have a lot of fun with it. So first up, um, I'm going to be using some gorgeous rosemary. This is ginger rosemary. Oh, man. Guys, I wish you could smell this, because this is powerfully ginger. Makes lovely tea, great for putting in stir fries. You know when you want that ginger flavor and you're adding a bit of soya sauce? Fabulous. Grab a bit, whack it into the frying pan and away you go. So my rosemary's gonna be king of the castle, obviously because he's gonna get the tallest out of most of these. So I'm gonna put one in there and because I can, I'm gonna put two in. Let's pop another little boy in right there. Now, already you're probably saying, oops, Tanya, this is not gonna work because your base here, look at that. I mean, your herb's going to be growing out here, but that's all part of the plan. Because we've got such a lovely wide area to work with, we can mound it. I'm going to put in this beautiful tricolour sage. And remember, with your herbs, that most of them don't like too much water. So good watering in very hot days, every second day, should be ample. 
and you can reduce it down to every third day if we've got just moderate cloud cover in that. Right, we've got a beautiful sage in there. Then I'm going to work with some thyme. Now, um, this is a lovely variegated lemon thyme. Beautiful with fish. Remember, thyme also cuts away at any fatty uh, material, any fatty meat that you're using it. So even use it with some lamb. Whole sprigs shoved into it. Fantastic. Okay, so a little thyme plant in there. Let's balance it out a bit. And I'm going to put another little thyme plant over here. Most fantastic. And then I've got a chili because what gardener doesn't have a garden with chili? And this chili over here is called Masquerade. It's one of the hybrid chilies that you'll find. Beautiful coloring. So they start off red, they'll go into a deep purple, and eventually this entire bush will just be filled with purple chilies. Not too hot. So those faint hearted that are chili 101 little beginners, buy the masquerade because it's not going to kind of blow out your ears and stuff. Um, it's a very gentle chili actually. So using our scoop and here we just start popping in our soil just around them. So it's much easier than having all the soil and then trying to squash the herbs in. So, um, so we're just reversing it, taking it back a step or two. All right, our main plants are in. Now what we're going to do is to so that we don't have to end up looking at this bare soil. You know, we may as well, if we wouldn't get a little herb container together, let's work with something else. So I've got a tray of beautiful frilly red lettuce, the perpetual lettuce. Remember, you can pick the outer leaves as soon as you want. Literally today, I could pick these leaves and start making a little salad. So you don't have to remove the entire lettuce at once when you're needing to pick, which is what I like, because you can still then keep your lettuce looking kind of okay in your garden. So to fill up some gaps, I'm going to put these in. These will last for about three months in this container. Um, by the time you've finished picking and picking and picking, you'll start after the second month, start tasting that the lettuce is getting a little bit bitter. It's at that point that you need to pull this little lettuce plant out and replace them with six new little plants. So just to add a little bit of color, I've got a little bit of mustard greens here. Mmm, beautiful. Zingy, peppery, lovely. Nice in salads, great in stir fries. Um, throw them in anywhere, um, but a lovely leaf to work with. Let's bring this baby up. Now just be gentle over here when you're working with the edges of your, with your um, herbs. Let's hook this baby up over here. Right, so the cage is on top. Now let's do a few little finishing touches to make it my own special herb cage. So what I've got, little Smurfs. <laughs> I love the Smurfs. And um, we're going to put the uh, little Smurf family in here. May as well keep it quite cool and funky. And uh, pop her in there. I've got some Tillandsias. Some awesome Tillandsias that I've just broken off from a few plants in my garden. Um, remember with Tillandsias, when you are tying them up, they're an air plant. They literally grow hanging on trees. You can tie, you can literally put a piece here and it will grow, you know, that's how they live. All they do is they suck up the moisture from the surrounding air. Some of them grow in full sun, some require a bit more semi-shade. So just make sure the variety that you're using in your herb tray um, is one that needs the full sun. So take a bit. I love using this little plastic coated wire. If you use ordinary wire, folks, what happens is the wire heats up and actually burns the plant. So that's why you always want to use this little plastic coated. So we can pop a little baby on there. There we go. And I can put my little green twine around it and tie it to... Oh, there's that little guy. And then I've got another little guy here. And I can pop that little guy. So you can start peeping through there. Nice. And close up my cage because we wouldn't like the little Smurf babes to escape. <laughs> close her up and last thing I need to do is give it a good feeding, a cap full of some sea salt into five litres of water. I mean, um, the herbs are going to need some nutrition and I would do this literally every two weeks. Remember we've got some of the organic pellets in, in here that's going to keep it feeding it and giving it the good nutrition and the good thing is that I can just hold it right over it and water through my cage. Water your tillandsias as well because remember they suck the moisture through the air and, and through their leaves. So there you have it. 
Smurf House with the difference. Wicked tillandsias, awesome herbs, and I reckon I've got it all waxed. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>